All right, so let's give a rundown of the electronics on the truck. So on the side, you have a switch, and this actually will manually operate the legs. Whoops. So you can lower. and then raise the leg. So the cool thing about these is the gear inside is actually spring-loaded. So there's a spring-loaded gear on here that allows it to overrun. So the motor can keep running, but it'll just skip on the end of the gear to prevent you from stripping anything out. So it basically gets to that last tooth on the gear and it just basically hits a, a spot that it can't push anymore, but it has enough of the gear sticking up that when you go in the opposite direction, it's able to grab those that gear inside and push up on it. So you can kind of see those gears in there. Anyway, so you can manually operate it. And then there is a switch here that on the truck, that little lever that you may have seen on the uh, fifth wheel that's hooked to the servo will actually push in on this. And depending on where it's at, if it goes all the way in, then it lowers it, and if it just goes out a little bit, then it raises it, and then when the switch is all the way out, so basically it's like almost a three position switch. All the way out doesn't do anything, halfway in raises or lowers legs, and then all the way in raises the legs. So you have your basically switch box in here, which there's a little nubbin that comes in and makes contacts and pushes the little switches open. You have the electronics for that, you have your motor, and then that drives the center gearbox, comes out, drives the legs. You have your switch wiring, and then you have this battery pack that you have to basically assemble. Um, it's kind of weird. I'm surprised they don't have something as simple as this. So you have this pack that runs this. And I didn't want to try to tap into this because this was already installed in the truck when I installed the wireless light kit. So for the wireless light kit, you have this pack which goes to this switch, so I can just easily turn that on and off, and it's mounted flush to the rails, so the only thing that sticks down is the little switch nub, so I can easily click that on and off uh, just by running your hand underneath the truck. Um, we have the FlySky six channel receiver there. We're not using all six channels, but um, it's the exact same receiver that's in the truck, so we are able to bind two receivers to the same radio, so when, you know, left turn, right turn, forward, back, all that, this recognizes the same commands as the truck does. So it does the same functions. Then we have the Tamiya light controller box. Now, not all the functionality is in here and there is no return because basically what you have is you have, you would normally have this plugged into the receiver and then out to say your servo or speed control or whatever. So basically this gets the signal first and then sends it out. So these I just tied off. I didn't want to cut them. Um, and I just bundled everything up and tucked it underneath there real nice. But anyway, we have all that tapped in to the taillights section and then also going up to the top side to add the running lights. So one thing I screwed up on is, you know, I'm trying always to make everything as tidy as possible. So I actually had these wires coming out the other side. That way there would be no chance of you seeing these wires. They would be tucked up like way up in here. But the problem is this metal bracket butts up tight and flush to the frame rails. So I actually had to take it back off, take the like things off, rearrange the wires and have them actually come out from underneath. So if you're doing it, make sure you're wearing your wires to the underside of the uh, light thing to avoid having that problem. So let me flip it over real quick and then we'll take a look at top side and then I'll turn it on. <laughs> look at all that mess. It's a nice tidy um, stuck down mess. It's got packing tape holding everything down, um, holding all the lights into place. And as you can see, you've got the amber market lights down the side. And these are a bit oranger than I wanted, um, but uh, they're, they're, they're marker lights. We'll live with it. So because I drilled all the extra holes, I went in and marked off the holes that weren't for lights and I'll be putting the stakes in there. So the truck comes with 10 stakes. I'm only putting eight on. Um, you know, again, I wasn't super keen about the stakes, but I think I'm going to put them on just to have them. And, you know, Worst comes to worst, I can always take them off and just, you know, if the paint gets scuffed or whatever, touch up the paint. But at this point, I would just rather have it um, on there. 
So because the way this light kit works, you have headlights, you have brakes, uh, you have turn signals, and each headlight has its own bulb. Each brake light has its own bulb and wire. Um, both turn signals, left side and right side, you know, they have their own. So there's a lot of wiring. Um, they don't have like split wires. Each one has its own individual plug. So what I did is on the back, you have, I have running light on the outside, I have turn signal, and then I have brake lights on the center. So there's one that stays on all the time. So I'm assuming it's an extra headlight um, set. So what I did is I cut that and um, I tapped into that one ran those wires up in here. So now I have basically two wires coming in. So you have a positive, negative, positive, negative coming in. So basically to avoid putting extra strain on it, I ran one side of the truck on one side light and then one side of the truck on the other line of light. So technically I've only added five additional lights to each circuit instead of all 10 lights on one circuit. So let me turn it on real quick. And basically with this thing, it goes into like a display mode. So all the lights that are on, um, just stay on. And then any of the lights that blink go into a blinky mode. So you can see the brake light and the turn signal are both blinking. Uh, so the brake light is a red light and the turn signals are um, actual white lights. Those are the extra headlight lights. And then the outside lights or white lights as well. But since we have the tinted lenses, it doesn't really matter. So that in a nutshell is, you know, all that extra wiring that had to be figured out. So I'm kind of, I'm happy with it now. Um, I wish it all happened at one time, but you know, lessons learned. And now I'm familiar with this to me, a light kit. And actually it's, it's really nice. And for like 17 bucks, I'm probably gonna buy another one just to have on hand in case I want to wire up another car because you can run it standalone or you can run it um, plugged in. So, all right guys, so real quick, I just wanted to show you this before I get it on the truck. So prior we had the manual um, unlock lever plate on here. We had a small piece of diamond plate here that looked like that in the back. And then we had another filler on the front. Well, now that we have the servo mount in here, and this actually sticks up above the bed rails, and we had to find a new place for the switch, I had to make a new piece of diamond plate. So this notch here is for the servo mechanism and the bit that sticks up above the um, frame rail. We have a little tiny cutout for the switch mechanism. I have a little notch here on the bottom for this little piece and a slight little couple dimples in the bottom, lightly drilled out uh, to make room for the screw heads. So what this is, is a real thin piece of the diamond plate and I covered that in the build video of the truck. I backed it with another thin sheet of plain to give it some extra strength uh, because we're missing kind of a lot of stuff in here. And then I actually backed it with another thicker piece and I don't remember the sizes. I got a mixed bag and I just started grabbing stuff. So I added the strips down the side for rigidity and then added some in the middle for both strength and to help support that switch. Um, so basically all this is going to do is I'm going to cut some uh, thick foam servo tape to fit along here. Uh, double sticky, real strong servo tape and then slide it over and drop it right down. All right, so we've got the plate on, switch mounted, we've got the recess cut out, and you know we have full range of motion and the release. So, you know, it sticks up a little bit, and you know, this came out a lot nicer because it was almost flush mount. This has a little bit of raise to it, but you know, that's me critiquing my own work from two feet away it looks freaking slamming so i'm happy with it all right guys so we've got it all put together um i can now see why people always make comments on facebook when they post up bought a new kit new winter project these things take a lot of time to do right and by no means am i complaining at all i've enjoyed every minute of it even the frustrating moments you know i've learned stuff and you know all in all, this entire process has been so much fun, although very 
time consuming. Um, mostly because of paint. Um, sitting around and waiting for paint dry is not the fun part of the project by any means. But if you do, if you guys do decide to, you know, go this route and you know make custom paint and all that stuff, it really pays off in the long run to paint it and give it a few days to cure. That way, you don't have to worry about a stray thumbprint or you know something going wrong with that. Once it's cured, it seems to be pretty durable, and you know you can handle everything and no big deal. Um, truck. You know, we had to rework some of the stuff on the truck, which is fine. And, you know, that whole trailer light thing didn't work out as I had planned. But then again, I didn't know anything about the trailer light kit. And I didn't know it was kind of so generic. So in all honesty, I would kind of steer away from that. Um, unless you plan on just having very simplistic lights. And you want that umbilical cord sticking out of the front of the trailer. Um, go with that. So... I'm not going to fire up the truck. Uh, if you guys seen that video, you've seen the truck lights work. They all work the same. Um, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Anyway, I'm going to turn the, the trailer lights on real quick, just so you can see them lit up down the side. But these are a little bit oranger than I kind of wanted, um, but they look good. And especially the darker it is, they're a little bit more of the amber. And yeah, we're kind of in demo mode at the moment. I don't know if you guys can see that. Here. So I'm going to move the truck out of the way for a moment so that does not get scratched. <clears throat> so right now we're in demo mode. Um, if the radio is not on, it doesn't see a signal, it just goes into a demo mode, which the, the lights that stay lit, stay lit up, and the turn signals and brakes that flash will be flashing. So. Uh, once everything is bound together correctly, the turn signals turn, the brake lights break, all that good stuff. But I'm really glad I went through and did the uh, lights down the side. I think without the lights down the side, it would have looked a little bit more boring. Um, I don't know how well the camera's going to catch it, but can you guys see the stripes along the side? And I did them up the headboard and on the back of the headboard as well. So I'll get a little picture collage and... You guys can see the pictures of up close uh, while I keep rambling. But I'm really tickled the way everything came out. Uh, since I had bought another set, actually two sets of Grand Hauler stickers, I went ahead and added the stripes. Possibly a little overboard, but I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool. Plus, I had all the additional um, trailer stickers, you know, DOT sticker type stuff that doesn't really come in the kit. And the stickers that come in the trailer kit are very dark. They're all black lettering or red lettering or whatever. So on this dark blue trailer, they would have just disappeared. So I was kind of glad I had the white lettering left over from the uh, Grand Hauler kit. And obviously I'll get it up close to the back so you can see that. But I put the little RC Elf license plate on there. Just a little shout out. Um, so if anybody has a trailer, you'll notice uh, on the back, I have black mud flaps. I went with those. They were leftovers from the Grand Hauler. And I didn't really, I, everything on this truck is, you know, dark and chrome. So the white mud flaps kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. So I stuck the black ones on there and I'm going to try to get some vinyl cut, um, like an Adams Playground or a AP or something and put on the mud flaps. Uh, haven't gotten around to that. Uh, added the little decals from the Grand Hauler kit to look like side reflectors on here. And you know, I did cut down the stakes and I know some people are gonna hate it. Some people are gonna love it. I'm still somewhat on the fence about it, but at this point they're on and they're probably gonna stay on. Uh, just because if I take them off, then I'm now gonna have eight nuts rattling around on the inside of the trailer because you'd have to take the boards off to get those out and yeah I'm not going to. And the sky's the limit with the load. I haven't gone down that route yet but that's going to be next so I do plan on trying to make up some pallets and you know some some lifts of tubing or you know pipe or something so I need to go down to like Lowe's and you know see what I can find that catches my eye to look cool. So we've got the trailer finished we finally got the truck finished, and what we needed to finish off everything was 
new receivers. So reaching out to the Facebook group, um, Bob's Facebook group for Hobby Concepts, um, I posed the question because I thought I was doing something wrong because I, I literally watched that video like a dozen times to make sure I was programming or binding the receivers both at the same time in the same manner. And it was driving me absolutely crazy. So to stop the insanity, I went on to Facebook and actually got some helpful information. Um, so, you know, Bob responded right away and was like, you know, make sure you do this, this, and this, and this. And that's what I was doing. So unfortunately, I wasn't home at the time. I, I we had gone out real quick. So later on that evening, another gentleman asked a question to me that, well, made a statement saying, I think you have to use this receiver, not this receiver. And I immediately went back and looked at my phone and I was like, oh, don't tell me that. So the FSI 6 that I bought comes with the IA6B receivers. And they're, they're great little receivers. But for some reason, you cannot bind two of these to the radio at one time. It literally picks whichever one responds first and binds to that one and ignores the other one. So I had to order two of the IA6, not the Bs, the IA6 um, receivers and bind those. And the first time I did it, I went into panic mode because you know I had torn the receiver out of this, I had torn the receiver out of that, got everything rehooked up and it bound to the truck first and this one didn't bind and I was like, no. Granted, these receivers aren't much. I paid uh, $34 for the pair of the new ones, but still, I didn't need four receivers that I couldn't bind together. Uh, so I turned everything off, I turned everything back on and went through the bind process again and both of them are now bound. So when I turn the turn signals on here, this now turns the turn signals on here instead of being in flashy disco mode. So, finally, finally, finally done with all of it. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be doing some more. Um, I, we went out to Lowe's the other night to get some other stuff, uh, cleaning up the house and doing stuff in the yard for the wedding coming up. And they had a section, a 10 foot section of really, really cheap pipe. I believe this is, you know, it's just PVC pipe but I believe it's really thin wall stuff for, you know, irrigation systems and stuff. Uh, it's not your regular, you know, household plumbing section. It's like over in the irrigation section, but it was like $4 for a 10 foot piece and it made, you know, the 10 pieces here. So I'll probably go out and buy another piece of that just to get a bigger stack. And what I'll do is I'll probably wrap those in like electrical tape or like real thin electrical tape. So they're kind of bound together in a plump and I could take those off, set them aside and put pallets on or whatever. But for just, you know, funsies and presentation mode, you know, I threw them on here. Um, hopefully I don't have any stuff on me because I literally just cut those up. I do have stuff on me. This is what I do for you guys. I make myself a mess and then record it for YouTube to enjoy. Anyway, let me quit rambling. So we will power on the remote. Oops, switches. We'll power on the truck. And we'll turn that guy down. And we should have lights on the truck. And then we will power on this guy. And as you can see, we have the running lights. Wow. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's a lot of truck for one little bench. So, you know, we have, and then brake lights. And then when the truck goes into reverse, the brake lights on that cut out, but the brake lights come back on this. So again, brakes and then reverse, but the brake lights come on this. And turn signals, so they should be working on the truck as well. So now we have completely wireless trailer lights. I love the orange running lights down the side. I'm really tickled with how everything came out. Um, and obviously when you turn the radio off and this thing gets no signal, it goes into like disco mode. So that's kind of cool too if you just want to display it. But we'll turn that guy off. So 
I learned a lot throughout this build. Um, patience is a key. Um, there's a lot going on with these, these trucks, the trailers, especially when you're customizing them and doing everything uh, to the best of your ability. It takes time. This is definitely a long-term project, and you know it's it's a labor of love, and I've loved every minute of it. Um, sadly, I learned another valuable lesson while messing with the truck and the trailer. Never, 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 never. If you have these big rear fenders on your truck, move the truck and the trailer at the same time. You will scratch your fender. Ask me how I know. So I think I'm not gonna take it off and sand it and repaint it. I do have the extra stickers if I wanted to, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut like a rectangle, like a rounded edge rectangle of some of that RC four wheel drive kind of polished um, diamond plate and put on there kind of as a step area and just cover up that scratch. Plus, you know, I am assuming at some point I'm going to do a dip or a dive or something around a corner and probably catch um, that screw again. So basically what happened is I had the truck and trailer connected and I was just trying to scoot it over. And when I scooted it over, it flexed a little bit. I didn't think anything of it. But on the bottom of this automatic uh, retract mechanism, there are a couple little screws that hang down. Uh, I wish they were flush. If they were flush, this wouldn't have scratched. But there's two little tiny Phillips screws right there that hang down just enough. And the top of one of those screws just went right across my fender. So cool thing is it's got its first scratch. It's not the museum quality showpiece that it was. Uh, so, you know, if I run it outside and it gets, gets a rock kicked up on it and gets a chip in it or something, you know, I'm not going to cry now. Um, the bad thing is it's got a scratch in it. But anyway, um, I, I can't say how much I appreciate RCL for helping me out with all this. Uh, this has been an amazing build, an amazing experience. I hope you guys have enjoyed the videos. I know they've been kind of long and rambly, but there is a lot of stuff to go on that cover on these trucks. And I just want to help you guys out if you decide to go this route. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up finally. No more takes. I think this is take 17 of the end of this video uh, because I've had issues getting it finished. But anyway, everybody out there, be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I'll catch you next time. See you guys later. Well, trying to put another scratch on it. All right, guys, welcome back. I don't know why I keep saying welcome back. You've been here the whole time. I'm the one that keeps coming back. We'll edit that part out because that made us look stupid.